Okay, so we should be live now. Okay, thanks guys. <laughs> um, as I said, we are now on YouTube. Um, and we are usually working with uh, Facebook streaming. So I have all my setup for, for the Facebook streaming and I had to fiddle around a little bit with uh, YouTube. But um, as it seems, you can hear me now, you can see me and we can start our little session. Uh, keep in mind, I'm doing very simple, very first uh, getting started stuff here. So there's nothing complicated yet. I want to increase it over time and, and get it more and more complicated, but um, we have to cover the basics first and, and the basic ground. So um, let me just uh, dive in and go ahead with our scene. So in this session, let me just bring up my 3D Studio Max. In this session, what we want to do is uh, we want to uh, explore how we can use OpenVDB to our advantage, where do we get volumes and uh, how can we render them or visualize these volumes and what else can we do with it. Um, the first thing, uh, let me just bring up another important uh, thing here. Um, I'll bring over my browser here. So I'm on the uh, webpage openvdb.org. I suggest you check out the openvdb.org uh, webpage. It has a lot of information, a lot of uh, explanation about what OpenVDB is and how Hollywood uses the OpenVDB uh, file format or system um, to create uh, these visual effects. Another very important uh, thing you might want to check out, because when you start with OpenVDB, it's always the first question is, how do I get the smoke? How do I get the volumes? How do I know how this works? How can I try it out? So it's very easy and, and, and great when you go to the download section. They have this download button here. When you scroll down, it's, it's a little bit, at first, it's a little bit hidden. Depends on your screen resolution, obviously, but it's hidden. So you have to scroll down. Don't forget to scroll down. And here's a lot of samples. Those are all open VDB files, free for you to try out and uh, use as a test bed or a testing ground to try out all kinds of stuff. So what I did, I downloaded this one here, the Bunny Cloud. Um, the first thing you will realize and learn is that these files are huge because they are volumetric files. So this bunny is 74 megabytes. You also get the voxel resolution, so you can uh, calculate uh, the amount of uh, voxels or grid points you have in here. Um, here we have the, the bunny surface, Buddha surface, all these laser scanned or, or 3D scanned objects. Um, here we have some explosion and smoke files. So those are nice to try out and, and other things as well. So here's a huge file, um, 330 megabytes. So as I said, go to openvdb.org, go to the download section. There you can get these files and play around and try to analyze them and, and use them in thinking particles or um, modify them and then render, uh, keep on rendering. Okay, so uh, that's where I got my uh, file. Um, I'm starting here with a very simple scene. So this is a, a Arnold rendering setup. Uh, this scene is very simple to create. There's actually nothing complicated or, or special in that scene. Let me start what we are doing here. So the first thing we have here is our particle draw operator. The particle draw operator does what it says. You can draw with the mouse points, particles in your uh, 3D view and then the particles are created and you can control them, give them a, a lifespan. Here we can set the lifespan, we can say in which group we want the bunny, uh, the particles. Right now we say okay everything I draw goes into the bunny group, uh, particle group and we want to create one particle. Um, 
so that's all we have here. Very simple. There's just one operator creating particles where I draw them. Um, the next thing, when the particle is born, we have this output here. Uh, we can uh, attach a load VDB operator. The load VDB operator, again, does what it says. It loads a VDB file and it loads it onto the particle that was just uh, recently created with the particle draw. So also very simple setup, particle created and for each particle load a VDB file. Uh, the load VDB is pretty simple and uh, my very first uh, getting started video I already talked about the open VDB container. That's our that's your very first operator you should always use when you create or work with OpenVDB files. In this operator, we prepare everything. The OpenVDB container, container is just a, a container that holds the volume grids you want to create. So it doesn't create anything. It just keeps uh, a track of what you're trying to do and what grids you want, what volume grids you want to create. What we have uh, created here is uh, a fog grid and you can rename that. So that's easy to rename or you can add more. Let me add, for example, a distance field. Now I created a new distance field and then I can rename that to my distance. Um, so what, what that does is it does not create a, a volume grid. So nothing is created here. It's just uh, keeping track, okay, I want to create a distance field with that name, but it doesn't create anything. So keep that in mind. Um, I also explained that in my other video. If you want to check up on that, go ahead. But what we have here now is we created a, a fog field because I know what we want to import, the bunny cloud uh, I showed you on the uh, OpenVDB page is a fog field and we want to import that. So I create the fork um, and then we can go ahead, go into our load VDB and reference our container. So here I would choose where's my container? Where do I know which uh, volume grids I want to access? So I just select my open VDB here and it, uh, I'll select the particle group where my volumes go and that's the bunny particle group and then here I have a standard input file where uh, we see okay we had this 74 megabytes uh, of uh, volume data the bunny cloud I'll open that specify that file and uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to import the file and we can add automatically. Now uh, Thinking Particles is looking into the file. I specified the file and it sees, okay, there's a density or there's a volume grid in there called density and it's a fog uh, grid. So right now I said, okay, I did that density and now I need to say this density values, where do they land? So I right click again and say, okay, connect it to my fork. So keep in mind or remember I did in my very first uh, session here, I said, I want a volume grid created named fork and that's of the type fork. So that's what I just did here with my right click. I assign what's coming from the file is called density. It can be called whatever, it can be called Jimmy Joe, Joe or whatever. I'll assign it all the data that's density is going into my volume grid uh, that's called fog. So that's the only uh, pretty complicated or thing to know. It's not complicated. You just say this file or this data goes in my uh, volume grid. Be why do we have that? Because you can have um, open VDB files with a lot of data in it. You could have temperature, fog, uh, sign distance field, um, all these kinds of, uh, let, let me see here, all these kinds of data could be in uh, OpenVDB file. So you want to say, for example, this float information should go in my volume grid I named Charlie and, and so on.
And this lists uh, this field down here uh, just lists what's in the file. So what did it find in that file? And it lists the name of your volume grid and the type, which is the most important part. You need to know, okay, this is a, a FOC uh, field. So when we did that, so we are loading. I also added, just for the fun of it, uh, a scale modifier, uh, operator, sorry. And the scale is applying a scale to the particle. So it's, it's a variation, 50% scale. So the data that comes in the particle is scaled up and down. So I have some variations when I draw multiple uh, particles. And down here we have a visualization tool that will show us uh, the field. So now let me just draw some particles because right now we don't have any particles. Let me just draw the particles here. And I'll draw one here, draw one here, one down here, and maybe another one here. So I'm, I'm drawing four particles, or I drew four particles right now. So we have four particles. And if I update my simulation, I'll go one step back. I can see these bounding boxes here. So let me just center those bounding boxes and move a little bit away from this. So those bounding boxes represent my volumes I just created and loaded in. The ticks are my particles I drew and the bounding box is the volume we just loaded in. And in my visualization or show VDB operator, I can uh, also display the actual grid points or voxels and I'll show them as point and let me just increase the amount of points and then you will see okay we are placing here actually um, the bunnies in space so these are the grids and as you can see it takes some time this is a huge file it has a lot of uh, voxels in it so we always suggest be careful when you want to display the points in here. It will take some time. And uh, 3D Studio Max is not the greatest when it goes to uh, gets into displaying these uh, simple points there. But the best is don't display the, the volume grids. Just go with the bounding box. That's the fastest way. And you get the idea. We have the bunnies uh, scattered around here in the sky. So the next thing I want to do is I want to render this volume data and to render this we need to write it out as a open vdb file and now i want because i want to render this with arnold as an example here in 3d studio max i need one volume arnold renders uh, one volume or i could have multiple volume containers or boxes but that's way too complicated and 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 pick then later the files individually i just want one uh, file. So what we have here as an option in the OpenVDB when we go into the export section, uh, we are actually able, so here I specify the name of my export, I say I want to export the fog and here's the option in the drop down we have without particle MA, include the particle uh, transformation matrix matrix and all particles in one. That's the option I want to choose. Now I want that all the particles are merged into one big volume and create one open VDB file out of it. That's a very powerful and simple and straightforward uh, solution that helps you a lot scattering clouds in, in the sky export them as one VDB file and then you can uh, use whatever pipeline you have, whatever application you have, you can just go ahead and export it and render it. So um, that's uh, actually what, what we have here. I say, okay, mode single viewport grab, go and export it. So I'm exporting now. So what's happening now is all the volumes that we created with the particles are collected and one new volume field is created. Uh, one fork volume uh, field is created and we did the output to the file. So what I'm doing right now is I'm turning off actually I'm hiding TP because we don't need TP anymore. We created the file and I'm now selecting the volume container from Arnold, the Arnold volume 
And there we do the same thing. Uh, we just load our file. We just created the multi bunny file. That's half a gig right now. You can see here. Uh, we are loading that. It asks us where's the uh, velocity. We don't have velocity parameters. We say, okay, it's fog. The grids are fog. And you, we already can see the uh, bounding box from Arnold is adjusted to what we had for before. And now when we render this, uh, let me just show you we assign the standard volume from Arnold, so it's pretty simple. It asks you, should I create that? You specify the grid name, the volume grid name. It's fog. And then we can play around with the settings, but right now the settings uh, should be fine. We have um, a background and a sky rendering here. And we just press the render button and we should see our multiple bunnies in the sky. So it takes some time. As I said, it's half a gig. So uh, Arnold is doing some internal preparation and uh, pre-calculations and setting up. I, I don't know uh, how Arnold is interpreting the OpenVDB file, but you can see it takes some time until it reads this half gig file. It does some preparation, acceleration stuff, and then it is uh, rendering the volume data. And you can have in, in the case of Arnold, you can have a GI shadow casting on the clouds inside of the, the volume data and inside of the clouds and all this. So it, it won't take that long. And there you can see we have now multiple bunnies intersecting each other um, in the sky and one large volume was created. So as you can see, Besides that you're working with volume data, which can get huge, large information of data, but still it's easy to handle with thinking particles. Uh, you can do um, a lot of things and export them. And as I mentioned before, when we export to OpenVDB, it's an industry standard. Every application can read this data now. So you can use thinking particles to create clouds in the uh, sky or to create all kinds of scene setups very efficient and very uh, easy do your export session and then go into another pipeline bring it back to uh, uh, 3d studio max keep on working on the visual effects in uh, thinking particles export it again or just go ahead and, and render it right inside of uh, 3d studio max so um, Yes, you can. Uh, I just got a question here asking we can use V-Ray Volume Grid 2. Yes, everything that reads OpenVDB can just render that. You can use uh, V-Ray. Um, I think Redshift also loads it. I think uh, Otoy uh, um, loads it. So every, actually every renderer, that's the beauty of it. Every renderer that supports OpenVDB will work. So yes, you can use V-Ray. Um, I know they can load OpenVDB files. And then the great thing is you have all the tools in uh, Thinking Particles. Let me just bring back uh, Thinking Particles here. You have all the tools to work with OpenVDB files. And I will uh, talk uh, about these tools in another uh, uh, live stream or video I will be creating. Um, we have new three new categories. You see OpenVDB, SDF and Grid. So we have all the tools you need to um, create and load and, and work with them. We have all the tools that work on assigned distance fields. You can add vector volumes and uh, create uh, shapes again and all kinds of operations that are working with volume data. But we, I will go through in, in another session step by step with these uh, new operators we have here. So that's it. That uh, concludes my uh, second live stream uh, with getting started. We, what we learned here in this video is we uh, can set up um, our volume grid. We give it a name. We decide what we want to have, what name it should have here. We can add the volume grid so we prepare 
that's our container. Then we can load a volume grid. We load it onto a particle so we can have multiple uh, OpenVDB files on particles. That's a very powerful function. It's so easy and powerful because the particles contain or hold the volume information. So you can actually spray uh, OpenVDB files into your sky or whatever on the surface, wh whatever you want to do or plan. You can use OpenVDB to transport from different applications. And uh, then we use the scale and we use the show VDB to visualize it. Um, yeah, we are not decided yet. Another question we got here, if we keep on streaming on YouTube or Facebook, um, I guess we can do YouTube. I, I actually don't care. I, I think we should decide on one. You're right. If we want to stream on YouTube, I have to see how, how the quality is, the fine quality and how it worked out. Um, but yes, it's we, we can decide on YouTube. Um, but regardless, if we stream on Facebook, we will save the file and then put it on, on YouTube anyway, or we do the live streaming on, on YouTube and then copy it over to Facebook. Um, we're not decided yet, but you won't miss out for sure because we will spread the videos all around on social media. Okay, once more, thank you so much that you uh, took the time and, and followed me with this little tutorial. And uh, as I said, I will keep on uh, going with these little tutorials that keep, get you up to speed with OpenVDB. And then at some point it will get com more complex and we do real visual effects. Okay, thanks so much and I'll stop the stream now.